Hello friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 35 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 34 before going ahead with part 35. In the very first slide, that whenever a liquid is left to itself, it always tend to attain or it always tend to acquire the least possible surface area so that it has the least possible surface energy and it can gain stability. So for more stability, the surface energy has to be less. So liquid molecules always have a tendency to have the least area, to acquire a shape which should have the least possible area. Now for a given volume, if you compare with any of the geometrical figures, you would find that sphere is the one which has the least possible area. If you compare it with any other geometrical figure, say cube or cuboid or any other figure possible, you would see that sphere is the one which has the least possible area. If you try to visualize it, you can see that let us suppose this is a sphere. So the, least, the surface area which comes in contact with the liquid surface or a solid surface at any interface, it is almost a point like contact. Right? Because a sphere at any point of time will come in contact with a point like structure. That means the least possible area comes in contact only in case of a sphere. That is why all the drops and bubbles are spherical in shape because they can attain least possible area being a sphere. Now let us look at the distinction between a drop, cavity and bubble. These are the three terms which are often used in our day-to-day -day life and but there is a huge difference between the three of them. The three of them are not the same. Let us have a clear look. When I say a drop, what is basically a drop? A drop is a spherical structure which is filled with water. That means there is water inside the drop and it has only one interface which separates it from air. That is air outside and water inside. So how many interfaces do we have in a drop? Only one interface that is water air interface. The interface which separates water and air. Next is a cavity. What is a cavity? A cavity is nothing but a spherical shaped air field space that is in the surroundings, it is just the reverse of drop. In the surroundings, you have water and in middle, you have a cavity that is filled with air. That means inside you have air and all around you have water. So here also you have only one interface that is this interface which separates the water from air. That is the air water interface. When I talk of a bubble, what is a bubble? A bubble is something which has two different interfaces. That means inside a bubble you have air. It is, a ho it is hollow from inside. That is it has air inside. It has air outside but it has a thin film which consists of water. So this portion, this thin portion is filled with water. So that means a bubble has two interfaces. One is air water interface this interface which separates air from water the second one is this interface which again separates water from air so in case of a bubble we have two interfaces air water and water air if you want you can take live examples of each of them from your day to day life when i talk of a drop you can consider any droplet of water which we see which you see around you that is basically a water filled drop which is surrounded by air. When I talk of a cavity, you can think of maybe the bubbles which you see inside your aquarium where you have water all around and in middle you can see air bubbles which is filled with air. Nothing is there inside that. Similarly, when I talk of bubbles, you can think of the bubbles. So when, you, when we talk of bubble, you can visualize the soap bubbles which you often observe while washing your clothes. What are they? They are basically hollow bubbles. That is, they have a very thin film of water inside which is enclosed air, outside which is also air. So 
please remember the distinction between a drop, a cavity and a bubble. And please make note that bubble is the only one which has two interfaces. Otherwise, drop and cavity have one interface each. Now that we have seen what is the difference between a drop, cavity and bubble, we will see how does the pressure varies inside a drop, cavity as well as bubble. So let us start with drop. In case of a drop, pressure inside, in case of a drop, pressure inside a drop is greater than the pressure outside. So here we will see how do we calculate the pressure difference in case of a drop. Since as we are saying that the pressure inside the drop is more than the pressure outside. So we will prove that. Let us suppose we had a drop. So this is a drop which we have. Inside we have water and outside is air. Now let us suppose that this drop is of radius r. So it is a spherical spherical drop of radius r which is in equilibrium. Now let us suppose that we increase the radius by say delta r. Let us suppose the change in radius is delta r. So initially it was r, now it is increased by delta r. So what would be the extra surface energy due to this change? The extra surface energy. Now what is surface energy? Surface energy is nothing but surface tension which is denoted by S into area. Right? Because surface tension is surface energy per unit area. So surface tension into area. Now let us say this surface tension. The surface tension will be between liquid and air interface. So let us write LA. This LA denotes the surface tension between the liquid and air interface. This into area. What would be the area? Area will be nothing but 4 pi r square. So what is r square? After it is expanded, r becomes r plus delta r whole square. So this would be the area after the expansion. And before initially what it was? It was SLA into 4 pi r square. So this is the extra energy. So let us calculate it. It comes out to be SLA into 4 pi r square plus SLA into 4 pi delta r square plus SLA into 4 pi into 2 into r into delta r minus SLA into 4 pi r square. So this term and this term will get cancelled. This term can be neglected because delta r is very small. So square of delta r will become even more small. So let us consider it as 0. So this comes out to be 8 pi r delta r into SLA. So this would be the extra surface energy as the radius gets changed by delta r. Now at equilibrium as we already said that this drop is at equilibrium. So at equilibrium this extra surface energy, the extra surface energy should be equal to the energy gain due to the pressure difference. So this should be equal to the energy gain due to pressure difference as we told that the pressure inside and outside are different. So due to this difference in pressure there would be an energy because so what will be that energy? As we know that pressure is equal to force per unit area that means force is equal to pressure into area right. So what would be the energy change? Now energy change is nothing but work done which is equal to force into displacement. This force is pressure into area into displacement. So this would be the energy gain due to the pressure difference, right? Now let us make use of this. So extra surface energy is 8 pi r delta r into SLA. This will be equal to the pressure difference. Now the, let us suppose that the pressure outside is PO and the pressure inside is PI. So pressure difference can be written as Pi minus Po 
as the pressure inside is more than pressure outside. So this is the pressure difference into A. This P was PP will be PI minus PO. What is A? A is area that is equal to 4 pi r square into T. D is the displacement. So what was the displacement that took place? Displacement was this much distance travelled that is delta r. So from this we can see delta r and delta r will get cancelled. This r will get cancelled with 1 r. Pi and pi will get cancelled. This 4 will get cancelled with this 8. 2 will be left over. So from this we get pi minus po is equal to 2 into SLA divided by R. So this is the expression which denotes the pressure difference in case of a drop. That means in case of a drop, the pressure inside is greater than the pressure outside by this value. That is twice the surface tension per unit radius. So this is an important expression. So this is what happens in case of a drop. Now in case of a cavity also, a similar thing happens because in case of cavity the only difference is that inside we have air and outside we have water. But otherwise they, it also has only one interface. So all the mathematical calculation remains the same. Now let us look at a bubble. What will happen in case of a bubble? As we already discussed that a bubble has two interfaces. One is air water and the other one is water air. So even in case of a bubble, pressure inside a bubble is greater than the pressure outside. So in the case of this bubble, the only difference would be, there we saw in the previous case, that is in case of a drop, we saw that pressure inside minus pressure outside was equal to 2 into SLA divided by R. Now since a bubble has two interfaces, therefore this will be multiplied by 2. So in case of a bubble, the difference of the pressure inside and outside is 4 times the surface tension per unit radius of the bubble. So the basic concept remains the same, just that since in case of bubble we have two interfaces, therefore it is multiplied by now let us look at an example or let us look at an application of surface tension. So till now what are the different uh, what are the different concepts or what are the different topics which we cover in liquid surfaces? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.